When I first started in the gem industry, all I wanted was to be able to look at gems and just like know what they were. Mm -hmm. You can do that too with a few pieces of knowledge. Hey everyone, it's Rebecca. We've got Rob here. Hello. We're ready for another unboxing. Yes, I've got the box. <laughs> oh, it's kind of heavy actually. And we got a clue. A color unique. With an emerald link. This popular gem has a name. Of which you may not think. Oh, with an emerald link. With an emerald link. Okay, so maybe it's in the family of an emerald. You want to feel that heft? Oh, okay. It's got, it's a heavy box. It's heavy. Oh, oh, that one is cool. Wow, this is, here's the heft. Oh my god. <laughs> here's the gosh. weight. This one's crazy zoned. Okay, so this is a family member of yeah. Emerald. These are all barrels. barrels. Most of these are morganite. Mm -hmm. I say most because this right. is in a little bit of a transition phase Well, it's there. only a little bit morganite with a large zone of not pink colored. I don't know what I would... Colorless to green, yeah. very light green. So barrel in its purest form is colorless. Mm -hmm. It's an allochromatic gemstone. Their impurities give them their color. So what you have going on here is green is usually a result of iron and chromium, and so you probably have a little bit of that going on. Mm -hmm. And then pinks are a result of manganese. A lighter pink is a manganese with a two plus charge. A, a richer pink is a manganese with a three plus charge. That's one reason why I love that piece, because you can kind of see a history. history of its growth and what's going on there. Well, you just said all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Morganite's a fairly recent gemological discovery. It was found in 1911 in Madagascar, and actually almost simultaneously found in San Diego, California. But it's found in many places. This big guy comes from Brazil. Yes. I think this one does as well. Mm -hmm. And then this is from Afghanistan. So this, you've got pink barrel, which is morganite. And then you have albite, which is a type of feldspar that's the really like bladed mm -hmm. kind of icy blue. And then you have a little bit of smoky quartz. That's an awesome color combination. It's really just, cool. Just looking at it, it's an awesome piece. Let's talk about the name. Sure, yeah. So it was named by George Coons, a famous mineralogist and collector. And it was named after J.P. Morgan, the banker, who was also an avid collector. And you can actually see remnants of J.P. Morgan's collections at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Let's talk about why we knew that this was barrel. There are some key identifying characteristics with these. When I first started in the gem industry, all I wanted was to be able to look at gems and just like know what they were. Mm -hmm. You can do that too with a few pieces of knowledge in your head. When it comes to barrel, there are particular habits which are just like common crystal forms. Barrel is part of the hexagonal crystal system, so often you see hexagonal prisms. This is a great example. You can see these hexagons. Yes, for sure. The other thing, and this sometimes honestly just takes a little bit of practice, is the particular type of color that these have. Mm -hmm. So one reason why people love Morganite is that you have these really pretty like pastel pinks. You have some like more orangey colors. These are very like standard colors for Morganite. It's not like salmon colored. It's not like uh, the pink rhodochrosite that you can find in other pink gemstones, pink sapphire. This is like, it's a really blush, lovely, soft pink color. There's some Morganite and Aqua pieces that remind me of cotton candy. It's just like oh, that perfect definitely. pink yeah. and well, perfect blue. Well, even this That's one is there. bordering on cotton candy colored. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you can also see the remarkable clarity that Morganite naturally has. This is like thick. almost three inches thick in the, in the thickest part, and you can still see my fingers dancing around behind it. Not every barrel is very clean or clear. Emerald, for example, often is heavily included, so is red barrel, whereas morganite tends to be very clear, and it can actually form enormous crystals. Part of the reason for that, they're incubated for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So they're in these deposits, often hydrothermal deposits, so that's a hot, uh, watery solution where different minerals crystallize. Think about all the things that have to happen to get a large crystal of such clarity. Oh, like, yeah. Because you have in the earth, you have so many different things going on, and to, to mm. have something not intrude upon that is pretty cool. So you need a lot of time and you need a lot of different ingredients. I think we're ready for another box. I'm ready for another box. Ready. Whoa, Ooh, okay. Holy moly, that's huge. 
Look at all the cuts on that. Look at these faceted gemstones mm -hmm. and some in jewelry. I think it's worth talking about how popular Morganite has become. Again, it's relatively new in the gem and mineral world. And in probably the last decade, really, mm -hmm. it has become extremely popular, but particularly as an alternative engagement. Right behind Sapphire, it's the second most popular colored gemstone for engagement rings. So I think that really says a lot. Part of that is obviously because of the color. Yeah. Is it just like a really romantic pink, orangey pink? It goes um, great with like rose gold. Yeah, it looks really or beautiful with rose gold. But also it's relatively durable. So it's about a seven and a half to eight on mm -hmm. the Mohs scale. You can wear them every day and yeah. not be quite as nervous about their durability. It, it's relatively clean, as we talked about. And so in like large sizes as well. A very large yeah. carat weight. This is huge. Maybe a little too big that's, for an I don't think I could lift my hand. The other thing that we didn't talk about is its relative affordability. So if you had a diamond that was, that was this big <laughs> And, and this clean, free of inclusion, yeah. if it was high quality color, that would be $200,000. I would not pick it up. Easy. <laughs> but Morganite is much more affordable compared to diamond and equal quality sapphire. And so you are able to get this big look at a more lovely price point. So I think that's also why a lot of people like Morganite for their engagement ring. It's plenty hard, it's plenty tough, and it's got a beautiful color. Sometimes the color is a little bit paler of a pink, and so lapidaries will cut a stone more deeply so that you have room for the, the deeper saturated color to really shine. Morganite is also, like many gemstones, pretty commonly treated with either heating or irradiation to bring out some of the more cotton candy pinks that you were talking about. It's perfectly stable, it's perfectly safe. Wow. While Morganite's treatment is undetectable, it is widely accepted, so it should often be assumed. In our case, because we are so closely associated with the mine, the treatment, and cutting facilities, we're able to verify those types of things. Right. Disclosure is a very important part of the gem industry. It's important to know where your gems come from, what has been done to them. Let's talk a little bit about science, because I, sure. I, like, I yeah, like the I science, love science of this. So, gemstones get their color in a variety of ways. And one way that many gems get their colors is dispersed metal ions. So these are different electrons, usually as impurities, that have an electrical charge. And what happens when they're exposed to energy, so it could be heat, irradiation, the electrons are either bopped out of their orbitals yeah. or they can be added or removed and that impacts the valence state which impacts how light interacts with the gem mm -hmm. which impacts the color. So when it comes to morganite and treatment, irradiation typically increases your pink or it can lean your pink more orange whereas heat treatment will remove pink or make your orange more pink. At the end of the day you get these beautiful gems of all yeah. sorts of pretty colors so we love them all. Our morganites generally come from Mozambique. That's where we find the most consistent yeah. rough. When you're going to treat a gemstone, you don't always know what the outcome is That's going true. to be. But we have found through our supply chain that Mozambique has provided the most consistent rough. Most of ours does go through in an irradiation and it's called annealing, which is when you right. heat it and you let it cool. The interesting thing about this process is it takes a really long time sometimes it for it to cool. Anywhere from 45 days to six months. You combine that with something like the COVID pandemic that hit, there's like a backlog and a waiting period and a, just a pile of Morganites that are waiting to be treated. But what that means though is from a supply and demand perspective, it makes the Morganite on the market that much more mm -hmm. valuable and interesting. And so we're excited to have these pieces. Actually, we'll include links in the description below because mm -hmm. JTV and our gemstones.com storefront on Dredora have a plethora of loose gemstones and jewelry that you can purchase. And let us know if you get anything. Speaking of Morganite jewelry, mm -hmm. I understand that you were featured in, in a very compelling Morganite jewelry video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I would like to see it. <laughs> I'm sure you would like to see it as well. I'm out of here, man. <laughs> oh my goodness.
Oh, a hand. He touches her. It's a mystery hand. Look at that ear from over the shoulder. Look at that unkempt beard. <laughs> the a earring brain falls. Drops. Champagne color. Mark and I does have like that pretty like rose champagne. Yeah. Oh, I think you've what? shaved since then. I sure have. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, I know <laughs> whose car that is. I know whose hand that is. <laughs> okay. Oh, there Morganite, they go. Morganite, the color of romance. Oh, there they go. They're is, going in. It is such a romantic stunt. <laughs> we have one final box. Cool. Oh! I know a little bit about this one. Go off. Okay, so as we talked about earlier, in the early 20th century, Morganite was found both in Madagascar and in California. So this is from a famous locale. It's the White Queen Mine in San Diego, California. And huge. it's huge. The production of mines kind of ebbs and flows. So in 1966, sure. there was a huge find. In 1990, there was an even bigger find. And we're talking biggest in North America. Unprecedented, I mean, I mean the best in the continent, yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is super clean. There yeah. are some tiny little inclusions. I'll, um, I'll allow it. But it's, yes, I, <laughs> it's I love the cut on this. I think it is so pretty. It's nice and, and it's got a huge chunky, table. massive table. It's like the what? platonic ideal of a gemstone, you know? It's, oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like you would win that after yeah, you, know? you beat a level. Right, exactly. You would collect yeah. that in a video game. Yeah, very, very cool. Very pretty. I like that one. Okay, so as you know, we take a closer look on this channel. Yeah, we I, do. I have my favorite. Oh, do you? Yep. We better not pick the same one. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, no way? Yeah. Okay, I was about to do this one because I thought you would do that one. Oh, funny. I like gems that tell a story, and I just feel like that one tells such a good story of formation, the different types of opportunity that comes with barrel and morganite, and obviously it's a massive piece, yeah. so I like that piece. I like this piece for similar reasons. I like that we've got three different minerals, three different colors. Love it. Yeah. Well, tell us in the comments what your favorite is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.